retailers, the competition for talent. A lot of factors come into play here as to, to what's uh, uh, affecting this challenge, we'll, we'll say, but uh, um, it's not just money. And, and I think, you know, it's easy to default just to that, but there's some other things at play here. What, what stood for out sure. in this story, Dan? Well, this, this is from Retail Insider. You know, it's my morning cup of coffee newspaper. It's what I read every single morning. Yep. Um, and this article spoke about uh, the challenges that, that our retail world is faced with today in hiring people. And hiring good or the right people has always been a challenge for retail. And the pandemic is doubling down on, on thinning the herd, if you will, Rob. We're seeing fewer and fewer candidates. You would think that the significant number of retail closings would have added a ton of new talent to the pool, but as Retail Insider highlights here, that's just the opposite. Many employees have left the retail sector altogether. They're either moving away from major urban centers, you know, moving, uh, you know, further into bedroom communities with this work from home shift that we're seeing, yeah. or they're avoiding frontline positions due to anxiety over, you know, health and safety yeah. um, and their well being, and and they're being compensated. In, in a lot of cases equally for being at home as they are at work, which is creating a whole nother challenge for us, for us, pardon me. And in addition to, you know, these other concerns, you know, poor remuneration, the lack of recognition, the absence of career path, ongoing, are, are, are these ongoing compounding effects in this pool. And no matter what aspect, Rob, we're in in retail, no matter if it's technology or education and training or merchandising and analytics, analytics, pardon me, we, we feel like our piece of the retail puzzle is the most important to a retailer's success. And the truth is that our people deliver success. Everything else allows them to be successful in our business. And it's our people that drive that success and failure in our business. And we, as um, retail leaders, must do a better job of curating the next retail generation or, or retail will die a slow and painful death. We need to improve the areas on the areas that were really highlighted well in this article, again, We'll share a link to this, but there were three key takeaways um, you know, for, for not just hiring, but for retaining people. And number one, of course, is compensation. Compensation has to improve. We've got to revisit how and how much we're paying our retail employees. And pay for performance must be a component of their remuneration packages. We've spent far too long in Canada bitching about the rise in minimum wage instead of looking at, you know, how do I pay my people well beyond minimum wage? How do we get them to be, you know, $20 or $30 an hour earners in my store instead of us focusing on, oh, minimum wage is went fit up to $15. Who gives a shit what minimum wage is if you're building an organization that remunerates people for their performance. They, their earning potential should be untapped. The other thing that was highlighted here was professional development. And the fact that training and education has always been an afterthought has to change. Warm bodies will never ever move the needle forward in your store. You need to invest in your people with good training. And that training doesn't necessarily have to come from you and I as the retail leader. We may need to reach outside of our, of our little bubble and bring in education and professional development. And always thinking, which sort of feeds into point three here, on career path planning. Employees, no matter what, want to know what's next for them. And one of the benefits of, of having this well-trained, competent team is it builds your pool of strong candidates groomed for growth in your organization. And planning their, their career path forward is paramount. They need to know that your investment in them will give them something at the end of the day, at the down the road. And us building up this talent 
in our pool is is paramount to, yep. to outlasting the competition. It happens with your people, not your product. Yeah. Do you think the industry kind of went through a phase, Dan, where a, a lot of retail positions were looked at as this is simply these are transient positions, it, it's yep. entry point versus the you know seizing that one word career. Like we're we're gonna treat and approach it all as the, right. these are our career paths. And with that comes money, comes training, come, comes the path. And, it, right. and if retailers just simply framed everything up in that light, they're, they're probably going to be pretty pleasantly surprised what, what comes out the other end. Yeah. And I think, Rob, this speaks a lot to your dedication to your team that you have today. You'll remember, you know, maybe a year or 18 months ago, we had Doug Webster from Staples. You know, yep. Staples Canada, um, Staples themselves, a huge conglomerate, but Doug recognized his position in curating his his team you know that in some cases there were transient people that he brought them in at 16 17 years old and helped them get to that next level he invested in them to become better employees even if that meant it wasn't with staples but doug also was curating career-minded retail yeah. people yeah. and and you know in our retail world in our indie retail world you know, one in 10 will cross our path that that longs to live a career in retail. For lots of people, it is a stepping stone, but your retail success comes from coaching and counseling your team, right? Showing them the pathway to more and compensating them at, you know, a reward, a rewarding, you know, self-fulfilling level if you're paying your person, the person in your store, minimum wage, if that's how you view them, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. You're screwed. You got to view them as being this, you know, six-figure asset to your store, and and don't they bring that into the business? We've we've long passed the days of the glorified cashier, and if we're not picking up on this in indie retail after this last 12 months of bullshit that we're going through that we need to have really strong people. Yeah. Maybe we got to find a new career path ourselves. Well, it makes me remember that great line of the, well, what if we train them and they leave? And it's like, well, what if you don't and they stay? What if you stay? don't train them? <laughs> and they don't stay? educate? What if you don't <laughs> teach them how to sell? Oh, you know, we talk about totally. the importance of having sales people on our store floors, not glorified cashiers. Sales people, that's a craft. That's a learned craft. And it doesn't come from trial and error. It comes from a basis or a foundation of education and professional development that allows trial and error to exist, Rob, yeah. right?